UHD quality video streaming. Internet like a boss. SLT Mobitel Fiber. UHD quality video streaming. Internet like a boss. SLT Mobitel Fiber. Life boy shampoo led kiri protein sa multivitamin. Kisa kis mula sita portion ekar shakti mat karai. Pay now, ask questions later. The UNP leader calls on the government to somehow source dollars and pay for fuel shipments, which are charged old prices. Meanwhile, Russia-Ukraine uncertainty could deal a heavy blow to Sri Lankans. Looking up and up, Sri Lanka tourism chief buoyed by the prospect of achieving 50% of tourism income of its best year. Our target is to achieve 1.1 million tourist arrivals. Not only the number of arrivals, but the yield that tourists spend. Yugadhanavi share deal. The Attorney General tells the Supreme Court that three cabinet ministers breached the cabinet's collective responsibility. Once petitions thrown out. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine. This Tuesday, the 22nd of February, 2022. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening, welcome to First at Nine. I'm Ham Kekanai. Now, the Finance Minister's surcharge tax bill was tabled in Parliament today by Leader of the House, Dinesh Gunavardhan. The performance of the Plantation Ministry was the main subject at today's parliamentary sitting. However, Leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikram Singh, urged the government to somehow source dollars and clear the fuel shipments at port since the looming Russia-Ukraine crisis can lead to a crude price hike in the global market. Here, at 3 a. Russia and Ukraine at the time of 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 the ऐसे May the came of Vishala, Prashna, Apitatu in the Tieno, Visheshema Videsha, Amatian Sakota, Videshamatumakarai, eight May Piliba, the Articate, Balapaneka, Etabude, Puluanang, Amatumata Villa, Varta, Tanato, Etoa, Hunter, Apita Puluang, may we want to hit a Guinean, it Mama Visheshema, Sabana Katumaka, Eka Ilima Tieno, Hara, then tell now Tunama, Miladila, and Aragana Tiene, Parana Milata. Kohom hari ini wata gawan, mukul di lalang kesade, ini kota alut ni laten ni. Mena itu turun tu kohom hari pun gawal dam. Kohen hari hoya gen, manda nak kohen doh ayan ni. Et paranda mil laten, naya itu nak tienno, et turun tu gawamu. Apik tawat tarik ayan tienno, paranda mil laten, hamek itu mampi gawal dam. Itu pas sani pagen balu. Later, the surcharge bill, which was gazetted by Minister of Finance Basil Rajapaksa, was tabled by the leader of the House, Dinesh Gunavardhana. Meanwhile, Minister of Plantation commented on the export performance of the plantation sector during the year 2021. Meanwhile, 
डॉलर बिलियन पहाड़ाक्वा वैध कर गया नीमत आपने हैक्या वाला बेइ केला आप विश्वास करना ये वाक्य तमाई अपना ऐने बोग शेष रेट इतिहासे वैधी में अपना ऐने आदम आप इट लाइबुने गिया और उद्दे आप इट ए आंचेन डॉलर मिलियन फांसी हटा है कुपेर का न पुला अंगुना एक दिधास विसर साप एक्चु Now that the developing situation in Europe with Russia entering Ukraine could well pile more misery on Sri Lankan consumers. With the possible conflict expected to result in a rise in crude oil prices in the global market, Cabinet co-spokesperson Dr. Ramesh Patran today warned that the government could well be forced to increase local fuel prices. Addressing the weekly Cabinet media briefing today, Cabinet co-spokesperson Dr. Ramesh Patran commented about the tense situation developing between Russia and Ukraine and how it will affect Sri Lanka. I hope and pray that there won't be a war in that region. If it happens so, invariably the oil prices will go up. So that will badly affect the Sri Lankan economy. As you can see now, oil prices are soaring. It's, it has gone up to the highest level in the recent past. So we hope that it won't happen so. As said now, it's very unfortunate that you know we have to succumb to those you know conditions and the prices have gone up. Invariably, the Sri Lankan oil prices have also might go up in time to come because of this situation. On the small contribution made by the renewable energy sector to the country's power generation, with it being just above 10%, in face of the island's rising energy demand, the cabinet co-spokesperson had this to say. प्राते वार्षिक विद्युतीय आवश्यकताएं वैन सीर दहाई करोड़ वैरी प्रमाण के इन वैरी बनवा है भाई देदहास पहले वेस्ट देदहास दहाना में दाखवा हो में दाखवा में अलूटेन जनने की रीमा वैरी पूरा बालागारी दिख रीमा सिद्ध वेला ना है ये इन साताएं में आरबुदे तीव्र वेला दिल नमूत में कापिटे आयोजन प्रमाण in the meantime, the Cabinet of Ministers has approved the Agriculture Ministry to enter into a Memorandum of Understanding with the United States Department of Agriculture to implement a market-oriented milk production project. The project aims to enhance the productivity of milk producers and the quality of their production. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has agreed to provide necessary funds up to the month of September 2024 in relation to the project. Targeting the 2024 and 2028 Olympic Games, the National Sports Council has recommended the implementation of an encouragement program to provide financial sponsorship for the training needs of talented athletes who qualify on the basis of fitness levels and medal prospects and to provide a financial allowance for coaches. Accordingly, the Cabinet has green-lighted the proposal to pay a monthly allowance of 100,000 rupees to selected athletes and 50,000 rupees to their coaches. Now then, Chairperson of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Kimali Fernando, believes that the island's tourism sector is on track to achieve 50% of what it earned in 2018 when the sector posted its best numbers. She says that the tourists are no longer looking for cookie-cutter products, but rather seek new experiences. And to this end, the SLTDA is developing a new app that indicates all possible tourist destinations in the country, including routes of travel. Sri Lanka's tourism sector recorded its post-pandemic highest tourist arrival figures in December last year, with 89,506. It's a reasonably good indication that the fallen industry is once more returning to its former glory. After all, it brings in around 4 to 5 billion US dollars to the island annually. Though the tourism season is slowly coming to an end, 
The number of tourist arrivals in January and February have been rather promising. Though there was a dip in tourist arrivals in January, it wasn't a massive fall in numbers as the figure continued to stay over 80,000, recording 82,327. Similarly, from the 1st to the 13th of February, there had been 42,469 tourist arrivals, a figure not too far away from the number recorded from the 1st to the 16th of January this year, which stood at 44,773. In this regard, the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority believes that the country's successful vaccine drive, coupled with good control over daily COVID case numbers and restrictions, have brought the positive momentum. Meanwhile, speaking at a tourism initiative launched yesterday, Chairperson of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Kimali Fernando, announced what progressive steps have been taken towards the further development of tourism in the country. International travellers as well as domestic travellers are looking for experiences. Unlike ever before post-COVID, people are looking for unique experiences when they visit a destination. Sri Lanka, we can be proud of the compact and diverse island that we have. Research have found that storytelling is far more effective, probably 22 times more effective than putting an advertisement with facts and figures. In fact, Sri Lanka tourism is now sought the cabinet approval to create the first ever tourism travel app. And the travel app already, actually, we have identified over 5,000 sites island-wide, whether it is camping sites, hiking sites, uh, whether it's the waterfalls or Buddhist trail, Ramayana trail, wildlife, the rivers, whatever. We have identified all over the country. That is to ensure that tourism reaches out to all of the districts and the provinces. I want to appeal to all the Sri Lankans, work together with Sri Lanka tourism. Sri Lanka has been open for business, for tourists since last year, and we are on track to achieve 50% of our best year, which is 2018. Our target is to achieve 1.1 million tourist arrivals, not only the number of arrivals, but the yield that tourists spend. They are no longer looking for cookie cutter products. They are looking to experience the authentic Sri Lanka. And we have so much to be proud of. And as Sri Lankans, I stand here today as a proud Sri Lankan, together with all of you, and say that we've successfully handled COVID. As all citizens, we can handle this even better. We have to look at areas where we can, on our own, do our part to keep our destination sustainable. Whether we reduce the use of plastic, whether we keep the place clean, how we treat our international visitors. And they will be the biggest way to market our country. Not so much putting an advertisement from Sri Lanka tourism, which we will also do. But I think it is eventually the visitor who will come and speak on behalf of our country. We will see you shortly on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching First at Night. Now, Foreign Minister Professor G.L. Pires says that the new amendments pertaining to the Prevention of Terrorism Act is an initial step towards the promulgation of a more comprehensive anti-terror legislation. Addressing the diplomatic corps based in New Delhi recently, Professor Pires said that the PTA will be amended in a way that it will fit the international norms and best practices. Recently, Foreign Minister Professor G. L. Pires held a virtual meeting with the diplomatic corps based in New Delhi to share information on the progress related to human rights and reconciliation in Sri Lanka. As part of the continued engagement ahead of the upcoming 49th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, which will commence next week. During the meeting, the minister informed that the Prevention of Terrorism Act is being amended with the objective of bringing it in line with international norms and best practices. He also said that proposed amendments are an initial step towards the promulgation of a more comprehensive anti-terrorism legislation. Further, he added that substantive amendments to the PTA include amendments to several sections including the ones on detention orders, restriction orders, expressly recognizing judicial review of orders and expeditious disposal of cases of those charged to avoid long-term detention. The foreign minister said that the nine-member expert committee appointed by the president to make proposals pertaining to drafting a new constitution has completed their preliminary consultations and that the proposals will be submitted to the president shortly. Sri Lanka had a prolonged and ferocious conflict 
which occupied the span of 30 long years. It is to be expected that after a conflict of this kind, there will be residual problems. That is inevitable, that has happened in all parts of the world, where there has been conflict of this nature. Since then, Excellencies, particularly after our government came into power, we have embarked upon a vigorous course of action to deal with these residual issues. We have already provided your Excellencies with detailed information relating to the work which has been undertaken on the ground by five domestic institutions. These are local mechanisms. We have the Office of Missing Persons, which is doing exceedingly good work. We have the Office of Reparation, whose uh, task is to pay compensation to those who have been affected by the conflict. We have the Office for National Unity and Reconciliation. They have made a great difference on the ground. 200 rundown buses of the Sri Lanka Transport Board were restored and returned to service as part of an initiative to restore and recondition the buses that have gone out of commission a long time ago. A total of 200 buses which had been decommissioned due to dilapidation were restored and incorporated into the transportation sector. The fleet of buses were added today under the patronage of President Gotabe Rajapaksa at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. The initiative to restore the dilapidated buses came to be as a result of the import restriction that went into effect in 2020. Accordingly, steps were taken to repair the dilapidated buses and address the shortage of buses while saving foreign exchange. Under the first phase of the project, 273 buses were repaired and added to the fleet in December 2020. Under the second phase, 200 buses that were completely out of commission at 107 depots across the country were repaired at a cost of 136 million rupees. The project is being carried out by the Sri Lanka Transport Board depots and the Lakdiva Engineering Company with the full support of the Sri Lanka Public Transport Employees Union. The President inspected the standard of the buses and engaged in conversation with the employees of the SLTB and encouraged them to come up with similar initiatives. Supreme <laughs> Supreme Court heard today that the three cabinet ministers who have filed petitions against the Yugadanui power plant share transfer deal have acted in breach of the collective responsibility of the cabinet. Making submissions today, the Attorney General therefore requested the court to throw the petitions out without even considering them. Several parties, including three cabinet ministers, filed petitions against the government's decision to transfer 40% of the Kerala Pitya Yugadanavi power plant shares to the US company New Fortress Energy. When the petitions were taken up today, Attorney General Sanjay Rajaratnam made submissions before the court. He said, quote, There is no selling of local resources to foreign entities via this agreement. The transfer of 40% of shares that were with the Treasury has happened. The cabinet approval has been obtained for that transfer and the due process has been followed. Unquote. Making further submissions, the Attorney General said that four of the petitions have been filed a month after inking the agreement, and as per Article 126 of the Constitution, the court doesn't have the power to consider those petitions. He added that every cabinet minister is bound to protect its collective responsibility and to answer to the parliament. He therefore said that by coming before the court against a decision taken by the cabinet, ministers Uday Gaman Pillar, Vimal Veeravansa and Vasudeva Nanaikara have breached the collective responsibility. The AG added, quote, the National Energy Policy has been submitted as a document of this case. Its creator is Energy Minister Uday Gaman Pillar. When that's the situation, he bypasses the Attorney General and appears before the court via a private attorney. He hasn't come before the court with clean hands." Unquote. The AG also made submissions on the petition filed by General Secretary of the Samagi Janabala Vegya, Ranjit Madhuma Bandara. He said, quote, during the period of 2015 to 2019, proposals were submitted to the then cabinet to implement an LNG project with countries like Qatar, South Korea, Japan and India. The petitioner Ranjit Madhuma Bandara was a member of that cabinet. During that time, he did not object to that project. But he has filed a petition pertaining to the relevant project now. It is problematic as to why the project that was good then is not good now." Unquote. 
The Attorney General therefore requested the court to nullify all petitions sans consideration. The legal counsel representing Ranjit Madhu Bandar, however, rejected all allegations made against his client. The petitions are due to be taken up again tomorrow. Now taking a look at the Colombo Bulls, the All Share Price Index gained 0.93 points today to end at 11,592.30. The S&P SL20 index, meanwhile, ended at 3,936.96, following a gain of 4.18 points. Market turnover was 2.8 billion rupees. Now here's a brief report on today's market performance. Today, the market ended nearly in the green by gaining just one point after suffering a major loss during the yesterday's trading session. And starting from last week, we saw that the market is moving without a directional move as a result of the lack of investor confidence due to a lot of uncertainties around. However, for today's session, banking counters displayed a notable positive contribution towards SPI, while some of the retail favorite counters in the diversified financial sector continued negatively towards the index. Today's turnover was lower than the yesterday's turnover level and recorded at 2.8 billion, striking a level of one week low. Turnover for the session was mainly led by the capital goods sector, diversified financial sector and the transportation sector. The rupee in the meantime remained unchanged against the US dollar at 202.99 cents today as well. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Now then in sports, the selection committee of Sri Lanka cricket says that it is a must for all players to pass the fitness as well as the skinfold test to be in the running for selection for an international series with no exceptions. The explanation came following the exclusion of Bhanuka Rajpaksha from the squad for India tour as he failed to pass the skinfold test. Yesterday, Sri Lanka cricket announced the 18-member squad that will tour India for a three-match T20 series which will get underway on Thursday. What came to light following the announcement was that batsman Banuka Rajapaksa had been left out of the squad following failure to pass the skinfold test during his physical. According to Sri Lanka cricket, the maximum skinfold level of a player considered for the series is 85 mm. However, the result of Banuka Rajapaksa's test was 102.8 mm. The view of Sri Lanka cricket is that the skinfold test is essential to maintain sporting standards and that no exceptions will be made for a particular player. Skin folds, Kinaka, the Shari, made the Pramane, Pina Kramia. Hammer Freed Cake performance, Vadivino, Egolung, made the Pramane, Aduna. Australian team make them, Egolum skin folds, Egolum Tiagani, Hatagan Angola, Hattavat Adui, Parisa the Matamethin, Asu Paha. In the meantime, Minister of Youth and Sports Nama Rajapaksa also gave his views on the exclusion of Banuka Rajapaksa from the Indian tour. And that's it from all of us here at First at Night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.